Warning, this show contains strong language and topics that some viewers may find offensive. Listener discretion is advised. Wrestling fans, and welcome to another edition of Sleep Lift. I am Andy Quad, and with me is Carmine Intonelli. Hello, everybody. And also, Sam Brooks. Good day, children. So, we have wrestling to talk about today, and. Like every other bloody day. But, we have something slightly different because. John Jones has been stripped of the UFC light heavyweight title because. He this isn't wrestle. Month. I know, but it's big news, damn it. This is Ufka. What Ufka? <laughs> Ultimate Fighting Championship. It's German for martial arts. But this has potential. Uh, we'll 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 segue in a minute. So uh, he was involved in a hit and run incident. It involved a pregnant lady, and uh, he well because of what happened, she broke her arm. The police found weed in his car, and there was a bong in the back of his car. But he's turned himself in, uh, and he has been, and will be continuing to go to court. However, he's been suspended indefinitely and has lost his sponsorship with Reebok and is no longer in the pound-for-pound rankings. That's a big deal, because John Jones, uh, despite all of this, like, one of the best fighters in UFC at the moment. Yeah. So, taking him out of the equation, huge deal. Like, just massive news for UFC. And the, the worst thing about it is, is that... This guy has been on a train wreck for probably, like, this past year. Like, I remember at one point he had a DUI, and then, like, just earlier this year, or maybe late last year, he he had a drug test, and it was found out that he was, he was doing coke. And now this. It's like... <laughs> at least he stepped down was- from coke to weed. Yeah, yeah, really. At least that's I, like a step down in the level of, like, illegalities. But the, but the guy clearly needs help, because he went to rehab for a day. That's not enough. That does hours. nothing. Maybe he, went... he fucking sped run the entire thing in, like, 24 hours. Who knows? Speed uh, run rehabilitation. Uh, I don't think that's how that works. I broke the world record for rehabilitating my coke addiction. <laughs> It could happen. Remember Live that one time when on Charlie Twitch. Sheen just blinked his eyes and he did it? That's like I, a record. I mean, it's sad as well because John is, he is exceptionally talented. Yeah. And he's really, really good. So, it, but it's sad as well because he did win that world title really young. And, I don't know, maybe that's caused it. I don't know. But, we hope he gets back to normal, I guess, as soon as humanly possible, so... After serving his time for the crimes he has committed, like, he's yes. not oh, yeah. hes not out of a question of, like, illegality here. He I did mean, some bad things. He, he won't be punished for drugs. That's thats a thing, apparently. He won't be punished for But he may be punished for, for this. Because because the, the lady in question was injured, it's now a felony, rather than whatever the other thing is. Not for nothing. I like John Jones. I really hope he's punished for this. Like, yeah. that sets a bad precedent if he's not. I mean, the UFC has, has punished him, but... And it's no, really, legally. Like... He has to be legally punished. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, Yeah, I don't think the fucking stripping of a UFC title holds up in a court of law oh, as recompense God. for breaking a soon-to-be mother's arm. Like, right. he has to serve some kind of sentence. And the worst thing about it was, he just ran. He just ran away, and the police were like, does anyone know where this guy is? <laughs> it's like, what? Where in the world is John Jones? <laughs> One of the most famous people on the planet, and you couldn't find him. It's oh, like, this'll be, be tricky, guys. How are we going to find this guy? Because he just ran. It's like, come on. In a hit I mean, and run? No way. <laughs> 
So we hope he gets. <laughs> what the hell was? That was a condescending I don't know. laugh. Oh, that's what that was. Okay. Um, but um. But I another hope... question that this uh, brings up is: What does the title picture look like for the light heavyweight division now? Well, the uh, it was supposed to be uh, Anthony Rumble Johnson against John Jones, but John Jones is now, you know, just he's non-existent. Um, so it's going to be Daniel Cormier going against uh, Anthony Rumble Johnson, and it's not going to be for like some weird interim title or like some fucking make-believe belt. This straight up be new champ. The straight up legit champ. Cool. As it should be, right? Why would it be anything else? Yeah. I I hate interim champions. I, th- this is the one thing I hate about USC. It's like, I remember when GSP got hurt and a bunch of other people got hurt in the past, and it was like, well, he's hurt, but he needs to defend the title, but he can't defend the title because he's hurt. So what we'll do is we'll have, like, a second blue belt. I thought, what? No, just strip the belt. It's a bit like with Dominic Cruz. They had, like, he was injured for, like, two years, and they had, like, an interim title for ages. Then he comes back and gets hurt again. It's like, all right, enough with this shit. Just have I mean, the yeah. actual belt. When you compare it to, like, I know it's a different sport entirely, but when you compare it to, like, New Japan, when athletes get stripped of their title because they have cases of influenza, like, <laughs> does that happen with fucking, uh, oh, what is his name? The guy won the, uh, never open weight title from, uh, Tomohiro Ishii. Oh, yeah. Ma- Makabe? Makabe? Makabe, yeah, Toby Makabe. He, like, the got influenza back? and he had to be stripped and then he's Oh, won that's it back why again Ishii today. has it back. Wait, no, he won it back today. Makabe won it back from Ishii again. Yeah, today. Jesus Christ. Okay, that belt's all this, over the place. What is this? What is this thing called? Never open weight. Okay. So are they? Because New Japan works by a weight division system, kind of. I know, but what the fuck is a never? No, it's never... an acronym for a um, I believe a kind of like developmental league that they tried to get going, but it never really did get going. But they just kept the name of the title anyway. Because the concept of that belt is that it's open to anyone in any weight division. Yeah. It's, I, I think is it, never is actually is it, an acronym for but something. But if it's a but... developmental, why would you call it never? It was an acronym. But yeah, still... it's, it actually stands for uh, New Blood Evolution Valiantly Eternal and Radical. That's the hypest nonsensical shit I've ever heard. <laughs> that's, like the, that's like the greatest thing I've ever heard that accidentally spells the word never. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they must have done that on purpose. Probably. Yeah, of course they did that on purpose. That wasn't, like, a, that wasn't a coincidence. Let's make an God's acronym sake. that spells never. What the hell spells never? Just make something up! Well, yeah, we kind of got a bit off topic. Because, relating to UFC, and we hope John Jones uh, gets all the help he needs, and he probably should be punished for doing something stupid like this. Punish him first, and then help him. Yeah, yes. I... Okay, so I, I'm glad I'm glad that... They, I didn't think they had the bollocks to do this. I really didn't think UFC had the bollocks to do this. I know I just said we're moving on, but one last thing. I really don't think they would have ever done something like this. Because it's John Jones. It's like he's the guy on the face of your video games, the face of all your fucking marketing and advertising. He's... You've been calling him the greatest of all time. So I didn't actually think that they were going to do something like this. It, it, you have to set a precedent for the rest of your roster. Like, if you fucking do something illegal, there are consequences, both yeah. in the realm of the law and in your workplace. You're gonna... And people, people are saying this should have happened when he got done, for, well, he got found out that he was doing cocaine. Probably. Yeah, but they've always had a different of... attitude to drugs, though, haven't they? They've never really taken that seriously for whatever reason. Yeah, I don't quite understand. In this particular case, he, you know, hurt someone else doing what he was doing, so... Yeah, it's really bad, so... Sorry, John. And yet when Rikishi ran over Stone Cold, we never got any of this bullshit. <laughs> well, he didn't have anything to take away... Well, if John Jones comes out and says he did it for The Rock, I think he'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, he'll be cheered. No, forever. it's too early for jokes. No, it's not. Speaking of things, speaking of MMA and UFC, because 
we need to move on because we are a wrestling show. We just wanted to mix it up. Because... Save a headline for God's sake. Jesus Christ. Dana White won't allow Rousey to wrestle, maybe? The Fight Network Good. asked the UFC president, Dana White, about Ronda Rousey's involvement with the WWE, and he said that at WrestleMania uh, 31, it was a one off deal, so it seems uh, that he's not currently bargaining on her wrestling next year. Good. So all those fucking plans of having like a tag match or just Steph versus Rousey. Uh-uh, not gonna well, happen, you say so that, no. but he's the only like member in this group that doesn't want any part of it. Like Rousey herself, ever WWE, obviously want Rousey's involvement. I don't agree with it personally, but for now, I can see it happening, despite the fact that Dana White, like, yeah, but he's—I don't want to say owns Ronda Rousey because that's not really how it works. <laughs> but does though? Yeah, but, but she's, he does. Though. She's just under contract to his company, so I assume and there if... would be some like restrictions that he can apply. Yes, and I'd assume one of the things like he's WWE allowed to do like... is... What is that squeaky? Oh, I accidentally uh, was pulling down my curtains. And... Oh. Uh, I, I, as the owner of UFC and the one who made all the contracts, I'm sure one of the things he's allowed to do is say, don't go to WWE and wrestle a wrestling match. Yeah, yeah are we going to that... ignore the fact that Ronda Rousey isn't a wrestler and Stephanie McMahon is not a UFC fighter. Like, how the hell are they going to pull this off anyway? There was... Yeah. This was off the air, and it was never on a show, but there was a time where, um, right after WrestleMania, Brooks found this article. It was, like, the top ten matches that Ronda Rousey could have. Oh, yeah, it was against people like Paige, fucking Charlotte, Sasha Banks, and it's like, They why? were all terrible. Why? They... It's, I know it's Bleacher Report, and they tried to justify it in their own backwards-thinking way, but... <laughs> She is not a wrestler. It and wouldn't work. The amount of times you've tried to combine ultimate fighting, fucking actual fighting, and scripted wrestling, it never goes well. Yeah. Why do you think it's going to go well this time? Just because it's Ronda Rousey. And but... for anyone, for anyone who would have said, "Well, oh, you could protect her by having a mixed tag match with The Rock and Triple H in there," guess what? That wouldn't involve Ronda Rousey. That would basically just end up being a match between The Rock and Triple H. So you might as well just fucking do that. But the thing is, as well, is that I, basing this on what Dana has said, he didn't say no to her appearing like again, but not wrestling again. So I don't know. I, I don't know. It. Dana's always been a bit weird with wrestling because he's like, "That's that fake shit, and we're real." That's basically <laughs> been the UFC's entire motto and their entire existence is we're real, they're fake. Well, he and does that... have a point, to be fair. Like, yeah. he's not... There's he's no, not wrong. like, zero ground to that. He has yeah. more of a reason to dislike WWE than Vince has to dislike UFC. Someone's oh, yeah. gonna die, Phil. Yeah, that's... That's the thing that's... Have you heard her thinking about training about women for the octagon? It's we ridiculous. can't have women being equal! That's... That's not 2015! I'm Vince McMahon, damn it! If women oh. are allowed to do things, someone's gonna die! Like me. I'm gonna die, Phil. I'm going to die. If women fight in the UFC, I'm literally going to die. What are we doing? <laughs> uh, what is happening? I don't Vince know. is a nut job is what we're doing. Yeah. Okay, because the next story is we shouldn't mention people dying. You fucking idiot. Oh. <laughs> We'll do a different story next, you twat. Okay. You can read them out in any order you want. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Speaking of things, bad news, Barrett won the King of the Ring, beating Neville in the final. Yay. I Yay. Don't give a shit. What do you mean, who gives a shit? No, not that who gives a shit. I personally don't care. Because the tournament lost me at round one. Why? Why? Just... Dumb results. Dumb, no, it's dumb because decisions. Ambrose was eliminated, right? Not and just no, not just that. There were other things. Like, why did our truth win? Yeah, our truth is a fuck. Right, this fucking Belen. Okay, was talking about a bit extreme. Spiders. This absolute about... mongoloid you is making jokes about spiders. spiders. Plague on society, known as our truth. This delinquent was talking about castles and moats. It's like, what are you... But what is this gimmick? He's just a jobber. He doesn't even rap anymore or fucking do anything. He's just... I look really old now and I'm R-Truth. 
Um, yes. His gimmick is that he can still wrestle despite being like 46, which is an impressive feat in of itself. Yeah. Is he 46? He's probably not 46. I don't Let know. Me he's look him he's up. much older than people think he is, but. I'm going to look it I up. I like R Truth. He's funny. He fills a hole. Yeah, he's funny. But he shouldn't have beat Stardust. Oh, God, no. No. Because he didn't win, so it's fine. Yeah, still, but teasing the idea of King Stardust is way better than teasing the idea of King Truth. Yeah, but our truths exist. He didn't exist before WrestleMania. Like he didn't what? really. Then, then he got put into like the Intercontinental. He's forty-three. Thing, yeah? Ah, there you go. But he didn't really. He didn't. He was just a job. He didn't really exist. He was just on main what events. Do you mean he didn't that? really exist. What, what are you mean talking our truth about? Didn't exist. Well, no, but not in the grand. Like, not in do the you mean canon. he wasn't relevant? That's the one. That's very different. <laughs> How many people on that current roster aren't I relevant right now? Like, come on. That's not an excuse to that, just that... wash him away from caring about him. But that, that roster, though, is so fucking blowing. That roster, though. <sighs> no, but, like, our truth shouldn't have beat Stardust. Who did Barrett even fight in the first round? Ziggler. Da- eh, fine. Seamus came out like, Ah, oh, you kissed my arse! By the way, fuck this you! <laughs> With fuck Ziggler Seamus? Yes! Yeah, because here's the thing. If oh, Ziggler, oh, it's funny! <laughs> Ziggler, Ziggler's an absolute idiot, I'm gonna go ahead and say. Like, he's canon stupid. Because oh, yeah. if he wanted to screw Seamus, punch Ambrose in the face! If he attacks Sheamus, Sheamus moves on to the next round, you dumb idiot. Yeah, and it was even he even acknowledged that during like the fucking I actually watched the King of the Ring finals and he was in the backstage interview of Renee Young and Renee was like, So, you actually helped Sheamus get through, you dumb fuck. What did you do that for? And he was like, Eh, eh, eh. He didn't really give an answer, of course, because why would he? Right. But I think he 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 rectified it by ensuring he didn't go through to the finals or whatever bullshit. What it's does like, that, that mean? Doesn't, that doesn't help that Ambrose How are lost. you going to make sure he doesn't go through to the finals when you lost in the first round? Yep. Basically what he did was is he went out and he was like, oh, blarity, blarity, blur, and Neville did the red arrow, and it was like, yay. This whole but- feud is about a man... Kissing another man's arm. No, it's about no. one man thinking that he is the largest man in the world and that any man smaller than him is small and pathetic. 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 Stupid! It's dumb! Your entire roster is full of short people. They're entertaining! And that's Seamus' problem! His the motivation actually makes sense. Seamus looks like a fucking idiot. That's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> That's completely well, irrelevant to what we're talking about, Andy. And he still says fella. He no, he doesn't. Fala no, he doesn't. Yeah. What does he say on the top of the ramp? Fala What? No, it's fella. I swear he's still... No, 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 no. You're an idiot. It's fala It's different. What does, that, what does that mean? It means clear the way. It's a Gaelic battle chant. I'm partly Irish and I don't know what that means. I'm not... Do you speak well, Gaelic? You're, well, you're really you bad Gaelic? at being partly Irish. <laughs> Andy. That's what that and- means. Andrew Kwan, look, at, answer me. Do you speak Gaelic? I did not speak Gaelic. Then shut up. <laughs> okay. Shut your whole <laughs> mouth, you dirty pleb. Like, like, don't make fun of the fact that you don't understand what he's saying because you don't speak that language, Jeebus. I was, no, I was just saying, if he was saying fella, then fuck this fucking idiot. Did you not realize he added two more syllables? No. Wow, the did word fella got a lot Did you really think he would just come out of a ramp and he would say, F-E-L-A. Did you really think that's what he did? F-E-L-A. You're stupid. You're fucking stupid. <laughs> stupid! Right, moving anyway, on. Barrett won. Okay. Cool, whatever. King Barrett, that's fine. It's better than oh. doing nothing. They should have just gave it to Neville. No, don't nah. give it to Neville. Yeah, Why? I'm fine with it. Because he just though. got here. That's good. No, it's Why? not. You Barrett who- has been multiple time intercontinental champion and has injured himself 5,000 times. And this is going twice. to be exactly He's like He's injured Seamus himself twice, Andy. Andy, 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 hold on. Look at nothing. it. You got to look at things from a booking perspective, not from a fan's perspective, because that's how you understand how these decisions get made. No, but listen, he's not intercontinental champion anymore. He's not going to be anytime soon. He has nothing yes. to do. But this gives him something to do. Plus, he's not allowed to say bad news anymore, 
He's really got nothing to do. Now so he can gloat king. that he's king. It's it's fine. Uh, and this isn't from like a marquee kind of standpoint. This is from like having an up and coming guy when it would be pretty cool. And the last time they like, did that, it was and Neville Lesner. has a huge future. No, it was Seamus. The last time they did that, Seamus wasn't up and coming at the time, though. Was he not? I thought he was still pretty new. No, no, no. no. He ran in 2011. He debuted in 2009, so... Oh, I thought he won in 2010. Basically, basically, by that point, they tried to make Seamus relevant again, which is kind of what they're doing with Barrett. And King Seamus was terrible. Yeah, it was fucking... King awesome. Seamus killed King of the Ring. Yeah, that's why they haven't done it for five fucking years. Well, they didn't do it that often before, so I'm not really sure you can pin it all on that. It was like every two years or something like that before that. No, 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 no. It was no, only cause... ever done one, like two years before that, it was Regal, and then it was gone forever for a while. No, Booker T won it in 2006. It's like three or years. Four years. It's not a regular event, basically. No. They only do it. But I don't even this know was a bigger gap than usual. Yeah. They needed content for the network. <laughs> And they blew it in one night. <laughs> Great. I expected this to be a much longer thing, honestly. Uh, but but the problem with the, doing all this for the network, it's like, well, okay, great, this week is huge. Next week you've got some kind of Roman Reigns WrestleMania 24 episode. But oh, it's going to be don't... shit. But it's true. You don't know. You don't no. know that. No, oh, no, no, I misheard what you said. I do apologize. That episode <laughs> should be good. But... After that, it will be shit. The network, you mean? You don't you don't regularly produce content for it, so... No, but now they have that Jerry Springer show. I don't want to watch that crap. No one does. You don't have to. You've probably already seen it. <laughs> what do you mean, too hot for TV? That happened in 2010. It was on TV. Too hot for TV. It was Jesus. on TV. It was on TV. We've already seen uh... it. It's basically just a Springer-esque way of saying, this is a highlight reel of shit no one cares about. Okay, the Renee Young show, Unfiltered. just because it has Renee Young in, I will watch. But I've heard the first episode though. with Seth Rollins was actually pretty good. No, because Renee Young is really talented at what she does. Also, right. she's extremely attractive. Leave me alone! <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, we have to move on, because we're running out of time. No, so, no we're not. We've only been going for we like half an hour. We have things to talk about, other things. I want to talk about them. Okay. Sadly, uh, I don't want to report bad news, but, you know... I'm afraid I've got some bad thing. news. No, I just... Re shut up. Okay. <laughs> so. The AWA legend, Vern Gondia, has tragically passed away. The former owner and uh, promoter of American Wrestling Association uh, passed away this week. Um... If you don't know, the AWA was the primary territory of the Midwest from 1969 to 1991. The promotion is best known for giving Hulk Hogan his first major shot in the USA against Nick Bockwinkle at the promotion's height in the 1980s. Vince McMahon would however sign away major names from the AWA in the 1980s like Hulk Hogan, Mean Gene Oakland, Bobby the Brain Heenan, Adrian Adonis, Ken Patera, Jesse Ventura, just to name a few. But Vern Garnier would and the AWA would go on to v develop new stars that you would recognise, like Scott Hall, The Rockers, which were Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty, Vader, The Nasty Boys, and Medusa. Uh, Vern Gagne was recognised for his contribution to professional wrestling and was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2006. I gotta be honest, I don't know that much about Vern Gagne. Okay. But, you know... It's always sad when a legend dies. Exactly. He trained Ric Flair, apparently, and I did not know that. Yeah, he trained quite a few people. Um, but the thing that kind of annoyed me about WWE, and, like, they did a great tribute to him and everything. It was nice. It was great. And they said, oh, yeah, famous names from the AWA, like, Sergeant Slaughter. Shawn Michaels and all these people, and they didn't mention Hogan at all. <laughs> I'm like, oh, fuck off. Are you really that petty to be like... Why would they I'm be petty? He, work he works with them now. No, but I mean, petty is in, like, Vince stole Hogan and then made mm -hmm. Hogan 
a bigger star, and it was like, I don't know why he didn't, they just didn't say, Hogan debuted in the United States in this company. I don't understand, like, are you really going to be that pay? Because Vince doesn't want to admit that he's never had a, a real creation of his own. Minus, Except like, he kind of has. Well, a couple. But yeah! Like, Cena! That's literally the only one. Like, The Rock. Sure. Yes, that's him. Okay, The Rock. Stone Cold was not, though. I mean, he made the character, but not the wrestler, which you can't that's have one without the makes, other. He made Hulkamania. And he made Hulk Hogan. But he didn't train Hogan. But he didn't fucking train Hogan. Hogan didn't, didn't debut well, in I, I was going to say Hogan didn't get good with WWE, but Hogan never really got good, so... Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. People are going to fucking flame you for that one. Dude, are they going to really... Com- are they... Is anyone going to argue that Hogan's yeah, a the great 80s wrestler? Completely different. Like, if you look at a match that happened in the 80s... They're bad. And you compare it with now, it's like... They're boring. No, 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 because like I, I just recently watched Ric Flair versus Ricky Steamboat. Well, please. with some exceptions, yes. Right, but and like, that match watch like... Hogan versus Slaughter, dude. Okay, come yeah, on. But, but that time period was genuinely shit. Like, so like funny. Hogan's not. He's barely a wrestler. <laughs> like, let's be honest. I can uh, I can hear the angry mobs now with their pitchforks. Oh, <laughs> Hulk Hogan is barely a wrestler. So rest in peace to Vern Gagne. May he rest in peace. He did a lot yep. for the uh, wrestling yes. as a whole, and we wish his family and friends all of the best. Yes, yes, yes. So we'll have to move on, because that's what we do here. But Daniel Bryan, uh, we have an update about him, because he was pulled from all forthcoming shows, suggesting that his injury, that whatever he has, is really, really serious, and he may have to be stripped of the Intercontinental title in the coming days. Brie Bella revealed during Raw that there's no timetable for his return, and is believed uh, that he uh, re-injured his neck, or may uh, have also suffered a concussion as well during the European tour, or just before it. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to take a moment to reflect on the career of Daniel Bryan oh God. No. in a tribute package. No, 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 no. It's I, a little early I, for that. I'm scared. I'm really scared that Daniel Bryan's career is over. And I said this last week... And everyone was like, you're a fucking idiot. And no. I was like, I'm scared. Who? Who said that? You, whoever. Liam. He's like, no, I wouldn't well, go that Liam. far. Here's and... the... Well, because a week ago we didn't know as many details as we know now, but I still don't know if he's going to have to retire or not. I don't know. All no I know is, for, for one thing, he's cursed to ne- like never have a good title reign again. Yeah, he's got the belt bug, unfortunately. It's, uh... Really and unfortunate. I'm I'm hoping that it's not as bad. But the the scary thing about it is, is that WWE is so quiet about it. They like, they're not even remotely... no, because they've talked about it on Raw. It's not like they're keeping it under yeah, wraps. It's not, it's not as they've not made any like official public statements regarding that. Yeah. They've not made any address regarding the Intercontinental Title. Because it, it doesn't it doesn't look like it doesn't. Has... It doesn't look like even they know all the details yet. It's still people are still trying to figure out what exactly is wrong with him. It seems. Well, I assume it's the same problem that sidelined him last year. Like, what else could it be? Maybe, or this concussion has something to do with it. Maybe he's got a really bad concussion. Maybe it's not the neck. Maybe it's maybe it's something else. Some brand new. I don't know. Either way, it doesn't look good, and I have a strong <laughs> suspicion that he will retire. Maybe. If anything, I kind of want him to. If I was a real asshole. This is where I would say, oh, this is why you should have given it to Ambrose at WrestleMania. But I'm not going to say that. because oh, come I w- on. Once Brian won the belt, I wanted to see him have a really good run with it. So so did everyone else. Unfortunately, okay. like okay. I say, he has that curse it- about him, but he can't have a good title run. I'm going to be pessimistic for once, because, you know... What do you mean for once? For once! 
Optimistic Roman Reigns point. will be booed no, out wait, of the building, wait. and it was a worst failed experiment. He's shit. Blah 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 blah. Okay. You never let that go. I meant no. to say optimistic, so I'm going to be optimistic for once. Let's say Brian comes back. Okay. Should he work a style where he doesn't fucking like I don't know severely injure himself every fucking year? Here's something. I was listening to the last, um, I guess it was Bite Size, where you and Liam were talking about this. Yeah. And you were talking about those drop kicks he does in the corner, and Liam didn't know what you were talking about. I know what you're talking about. That was fucking infuriating. <laughs> he needs to... S- not. I'm not talking about Liam anymore. Brian needs to stop doing those drop kicks. Because he nearly lands on his head. He does. Every time. And he needs to stop doing giant back superplexes and yeah. shit like that. Uh, but I think the fans wouldn't care if he's... Like, I don't want to sound like JR and be like, he needs to slow down. But, but he, he kind of needs to slow down, doesn't yeah. he? He's like the only guy that needs to slow down at this point. And, and the I think thing the fans is... fans wouldn't care. No, fans, because he can. Anyway. He's got such... He is in such a lucky position, if he can come back from this, where he doesn't have to run around and jump off of things... Because yeah. even in the indies, he was one of the most gifted ground technicians and submission workers. Like, yes, just make exactly. that your new style. Are we going to forget that that's how he initially debuted? He was the submission specialist. He yeah. could break out of Do any submission again. hold and apply any. Do but that. Still, Less running still... knees, more yes locks. Yeah. The best thing is, though... Stone Cold Steve Austin did this. Like, he said on his podcast, I... Uh, just listen to he said that when he broke his neck he he realized that he couldn't do half the shit that he used to so he was like okay I'll just do all the popular things I can still do and we'll just roll with that and ironically after that he became even more popular during that run yeah so uh, wh- it, here's the thing take Brian's incredible technical skills. Oh, he needs to stop doing moves where he lands on his head. Fuck. Man. And then like, take his new, re- relatively new, incredible overness. Yeah. Combine them. You have what could be the perfect wrestler. Like. And the thing is, as well, people need to stop doing moves to him where he lands on his fucking head. Luke Harper, stop dropping him on his head, dude. I hate that fucker. No, I love Luke Harper. He's great, but he's, he's got a very... one of the very... most underrated workers on that roster, period. He is. He's fantastic. On. He's not the problem. The problem is Brian wants to put on the most impactful show he can. He's always been like that. And so when Luke Harper's in the ring with him, Brian's like, throw me as much as you want. <laughs> but Luke has to say no. I am your rag doll. It's like, dude... Just, like no. that match he had with Sheamus on SmackDown a few weeks ago. Oh, God. Then again, Sheamus was working, like, kind of recklessly during that match. Yeah, but, like, I'm sure oh, Brian didn't God. stop him, you know what I mean? No, no. God forbid. Brian is probably like, I don't know. He's an entertainer. He's a He's performer. in love with that he, shit. He lives and breathes wrestling. That's what he does. He loves yeah, getting I'm... the shit kicked out of him. He fucking dislocated his retina once or some shit. Like... Yeah, he had to, literally in Ring of Honor, he had to wrestle with a pirate eye patch on for a while because he detached his retina. He wrestled with a detached retina! As like, a pirate! A fucking pirate! Like, pirate just, Brian! If, if Danielson. he is medically able to come back, please do God, the technical you. groundwork instead of the high flying. L- I'm serious. Do stop doing, stop doing the running knee. Yeah. Stop. Like, all together, stop. He needs to come up with a new move. I don't know what. I don't know why they gave him an impact finisher to begin with. He didn't need it's, it. It doesn't even have well, a name. <laughs> that, can, that can be argued. Like, he debuted it against, I think, John Cena when he won his first title, so... It was cool, but now that he's hurt, stop doing it. It's been yeah. like two years. You can kind of afford to not do it anymore. And besides, plenty of other people do that move now, so it's fine. Yeah, Hideo Itami does a similar move. Yeah, Finn so, yeah. Balor does it a couple of times also. It's fine. Yeah, just so don't, just don't go, do that. stick to the yes lock and, and put problem, other submissions with, in your finisher repertoire. The problem with that running knee, here's the thing about bringing Kenta, right? Atami, right? The go to sleep was his move. Punk yes. was using it for years. That running knee 
was Kenta's move. Brian's been using it for years. Everybody nicked moves off this guy, right? The kicks and he's and slowly everything. taking them back. He's slowly now taking them back. The shotgun drop kick is the same thing as the running knee almost. Yeah. And that's his finisher in NXT. Do you think it's a conspiracy theory? But as no. soon as he shows up, the other two moves are gone. Uh, but the running knee's not actually gone yet. Whoa, conspiracy. Speaking of things that are gone, and Stone Cold Steve Austin, he's insisted huh? that this no heat with WWE. Uh, Stone Cold continues to play the diplomat despite what uh, appears to be a worsening relationship with the WWE. On his latest podcast, which I don't think is now his latest podcast, but whatever, he still is on good terms with the company, even though they forced uh, pro wrestling tees to pull some of his per- personal merchandise uh, he just described it as simply business. It's believed that the issue stems from the t shirt company using what they thought was a trademark free image of Austin from Getty Images, only for WWE to claim that it wasn't. Uh, the fault there is really with Getty Images for licensing an image that they didn't even have the rights to. Uh, though, of course, we cannot be certain that WWE's claim is legitimate. Austin has reassured fans that he will be working with WWE down the line. Um, and the WWE podcast series uh, that Stone Cold did was replaced by Chris Jericho's. Uh, so, lean to the log- logical speculation that Jericho will go easier on his guests than the Rattlesnake. Which but we've I, I clearly never, I, seen, which is basically like, his podcast with John Cena felt like a conversation in a bar compared to fucking Stone Cold and Vince McMahon. Because also think of who they are. Like, think of the conversations Stone Cold and Vince would naturally have, and then think of the conversations Jericho and Cena would naturally have. That's not because Jericho's going easier on people, it's just because, fucking look at who they are! That's like me and Brooks having a conversation, or me and Liam having a conversation. Like, Yeah, doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, the thing is as well, I think it partly to do with the guest as well, because Cena isn't in any position where he's actually booking anything. Right. Or- Anything like that. Jericho's so. not going to be able to ask Cena, why are they not pushing Cesaro? Like, Yeah, he doesn't know. He's one of the boys, just like Jericho basically is. You know what he's I mean? He's got not... more say than Cesaro, but he doesn't make decisions f- yeah. finite. He, he, I like how the couple... go-to topic is Cesaro as well. It's like, yeah, I'm one, just, that's that's the just the first name that came to mind. Why are you not pushing him? And Even though he's is... he's a former tag champ now, like it's he's fine. That, he's I, it was fine. just the first name that came to mind. Yeah, and, and Cena's the face of the company. He's the company man, so he's not going to turn around and go. I think everything they're doing is stupid. Yeah, why would he do that? You know what I mean? And Even though he had a couple complaints, like he's not he's not saying everything's perfect either. So it's like, oh no, 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 no. Every, but you can only like, go so far. You can't be like fuck Vince McMahon. Right. If he did that, the entire internet would blow up. He'd be like, if, what if, the fuck if, is this? If Jericho asked Cena. Uh, like, oh, what do you think about your character? Like, what do you think about turning heel or something? And Cena's like, I think Vince is a fucking idiot. I should have turned heel a long time ago. It's like, no, he's never going to say that. No, of course not. Well, why would he? Right, he doesn't even think that. But I mean, like, even if it was something he disagreed with, he wouldn't say that. But we are kind of sidetracking from the uh, Steve Austin story here. Yeah, yeah, the point is that, what I, the point I was trying to make is that Jericho's not just a fucking lighthearted easygoing guy compared to Stone Cold. It's just a matter of who they got. Let's the, see how his interview with Stephanie goes before we jump to major conclusions. Yeah, really. The thing about Austin as well is it just... its well, I mean, there's no secret that Austin and Vince and the entire company it's like a love-hate relationship. Like, <laughs> Austin goes away, they like, say that he dropped his ball, he comes back a year later and they just fucking love him again. And it's not the analogy, but again, okay. And he comes back again, he goes away again. This is probably just that. What, you mean that he's a part-timer? <laughs> no, I mean, in terms of the actual relationship with the company, like, if, like what, what terms, like, they're, they're on, like, kind of thing. To be honest, I really don't care. Yeah. Like, what does Steve Austin bring to the product now anyway, apart from the pop? Nothing. Besides from that WrestleMania 30 thing, yeah. Am I the only one that, who didn't that think that was so fucking amazing, spectacular? I thought it was nice, but then again, you, was you a just, cool little thing. But like, you just hate some old people, people, so no, it's it not. Was... It's not that. It's literally, it was just a big 
catchphrase vomiting session. But I yeah, but it was a cool catchphrase vomiting yeah. session. Sure, actually, it went on a little first. long for my taste, and yeah. like, ev- and people are giving it more credit than it deserves. People just that to, was one of the best appreciate... WrestleMania moments of all time. It's like no, no, no. You just have to appreciate what? the magnitude of the moment happening in the first place. Yeah, that's the first time all three of them have been in a ring at the same time. Yeah, yeah sure, and I get that. And I guess this, right. And like I said, I didn't hate the moment. I'm just saying, definitely wasn't the best moment of all time. Like people got to relax. That's that. That's an actual once in a lifetime moment, unlike half the things they say at WrestleMania. That is a once in a lifetime. Like that one that. other thing they said was a once right. in a lifetime. Yeah, okay, I don't want to go thing. into that. <laughs> well, technically, that is half the things. Uh huh. You're, you're completely right. But um. See, I'm a fucking genius. No, I not go what far. I said. No, <laughs> Speaking no, no of not that. being a genius, uh, Booker T made a stupid comment about Owen Hart on Raw. Did he? Um, <laughs> I fucking you know I need a rant about Booker T in a minute. But well, I didn't no, hear this. this well, let me even, first this hear. This isn't even a thing. Okay, uh, before we get going on this, just read out the details. Okay, so Booker T apologised for comments he made about Owen Hart during Raw that may be uh, misconstructed as being offensive. In putting over the winner Neville as a high flyer, he brought up the former King of the Ring winner Owen Hart. He said that Owen couldn't defy gravity like Neville, which, considering his tragic death, is perhaps a poor choice of words. Of course, there is no negative intent by Booker, and he's simply just referring to Neville's gimmick. Exactly, that's all this is. I don't know why people. Obviously, there's a reason to be offended here because it's a really, really bad coincidence. But yeah, for God's sake, this is it's this a is nothing more. Than a coincidence. Oh. It was a poor choice of words. He obviously wasn't thinking at the time. It's which, come on, it's Booker T. It's it's Booker T. Like, no, Booker he's not the greatest commentator idiot. of all time, is he? Exactly. So he's a he's a fucking idiot, and he shouldn't be on that fucking. I, okay. Game. Why I are you him, saying? I find that? him more entertaining than JBL. You know. No, no, they both need to go because at this point, you know, in the Muppets, you got those two old fucks <laughs> that are just basically like burying everyone. <laughs> That's what they are. They're not funny. <laughs> Like when, Neville hit, when 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 <laughs> Neville like hit his face on the table last night at the King of the Ring, and JBL was like, "Ah, it's a good thing he's ugly, isn't it?" Like, what the fuck? Like Booker T just that's he just, an example of a heel commentator. Booker T says Andy. dumb shit. Like I've never seen Neville do the red arrow before in my life. You are there every week, you fucking pleb. When did he say that? He says that. He says that. When. He, he says it, it every week. week. <laughs> he does. He says it every fucking week. He's like, I've never seen this guy do this move before. Yes, you have. You've been there every week for months. Are you Shut sure he actually up. says those exact words? Yeah, are you I sure, don't know. Are I you sure that, that you're not misconjuring it? Like, I've never seen a move like this before. Like, no, surely that's, that's not the same thing. No, he's saying it like, I've never seen him do this. He's saying it like that. He's a fucking idiot. Okay, he's well, that's terrible. that's stupid, but he's not the worst commentator in the world like you're making him out to be. Yes, he is. No. He's the best at that table. No, he's not. Yeah, he is. Michael Cole is... Chill. No, you're... you're dumb. I'm not saying he's good or the best in the fucking world because this entire company are full of idiots. I... I... JBL is just a guy that shouts and just says things just... For the sake of saying them, he's contrary for the sake of being contrary. Right, and Booker T is a clown and a complete idiot because he just goes, "Ha! He's in my face five <laughs> and this shit." His voice doesn't crack like that. And Michael Cole is just sterilized commentator number nine hundred fifty-five that WWE have produced in some kind of fucking I don't know lab somewhere. Oh, it's so <laughs> edgy to hate on Michael Cole. Whoa. But, but, and. Uh, <laughs> The problem is, is that Booker T, when he's on these fucking pre-show things, he always interrupts Renee Young, or it has something that doesn't add to anything. It's like, I love the new day! Like, why? They're heels. <laughs> why do you love the new day? Stop it. He's just a dickhead! He's just a dickhead! He's just yep. a dickhead. Okay. <laughs> I don't want him on my... He's not entertaining! He doesn't add anything to the product. JBL, when he says fucking dumb things, yes, you know what? This entire commentary team is shit. Because whenever yes. JBL says anything, no one turns around and goes, "Stop saying these things, JBL." When Stop when talking. Bobby, when Bobby the Brain Heenan was with Gorilla Monsoon, or when JR was with Jerry the King Lawler when he was a heel, right? And when 
Heenan and Lawler would say anything dastardly or bad. Well, hell, even Paul Heyman, when he was a heel commentator, the fucking good guy commentator would be like, shut the fuck up, you stupid prick. <laughs> now, they just laugh. They go, ha, 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 it's true. Never listen, ugly cunt. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> like, what the fuck? That's basically, like, you're burying everyone. And it's just terrible. I can't stand... This is why I can't watch Raw. Because it's a three-hour show with three fucking idiots who individually have something wrong. Yeah, I, I gotta say, my least favorite moments on commentary is when one of them makes a really shitty joke. And, and they, they all, all just start laughing. It's no, like... no, no, not even that. It's when they make a really outdated, like, really, really old joke, and they spend the next five minutes explaining why it's funny. In the meantime, the match is over and we're already backstage. Or Michael Cole's talking about social media and fucking JBL's like, I don't know what hashtag is, it's a fucking check a fuck. Right? And the Booker T's like, What the hell? Like, that is just shit. What the hell? I hate... I swear I we've hate, complained about this many, many a time. Like, this, I, this is hardly groundbreaking, it. guys. I hate... I hate JBL and Booker T. Everyone I, hates I, the commentary team. This isn't news. This isn't fresh news. Everyone, oh, this commentary team's bad. Yeah. It's been Thinking bad it's been this way news. forever, guys. It's not going to change anytime soon. Well, speaking of changes, uh, Smashing Pumpkin's frontman has joined TNA. Billy Corgan has been named the company's senior producer, creative, and talent development for TNA. Uh, Billy Corgan, a proverbial Paul Heyman guy, has long dabbled in the world of professional wrestling, appearing in the original ECW and in TNA in the past. And he recently uh, ran his own independent promotion in Chicago called Resistance Pro. Corgan has told Fox News that he wants to add some complexities to TNA storylines, and I quote, having characters who explore race and transgender issues is certainly a possibility. There are ways to explore those themes in ways that are uh, productive, create new stars, and show that value-based babyfaces, no matter what their background, no matter where they come from, can draw a new audience and inspire people in new ways. I actually got a copy of his uh, manifesto that he actually drafted up when he was uh, He's not hired. like you a fucking hear this? politician. Do you want to hear this? Yes. Well, the first, first act that he's doing is that he's renaming the Hardy Boys into Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. That's a bit <laughs> Shut weird, up. I think, first of all. I, Second of all, okay. everyone's theme song is going to be from the album Oceana by okay, Smashing wait, Pumpkins. Well, that's a bit, that's, that's okay. bit weird as well. Uh, okay, wait, you're just taking the piss. Yes! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you get it? That's the joke. I, I thought you were being serious. How is okay. melancholy and sadness not obvious? <laughs> I would have loved that. That'd be amazing. No, no, he melancholy and the like... infinite sadness. The infinite sadness being <laughs> Matt Hardy. Oh, I thought they were going to call the fucking show Infinite Sadness, but... You know, whatever. <laughs> no, they're renaming um, it the Total Zeitgeist Action. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. You have to turn so, the N on its side and it becomes a Z. That's really efficient. I mean... Uh, here's, here's the thing about this. I don't give a shit. He might know what he's doing. He might not. Let's wait and see. I like the Smashing Pumpkins. They make good music. Will they he might do make the good same wrestling for CNA? I don't is, know. We don't know. How are we like... going to know that? But this role seems to be everything and fucking anything. Senior producer, creative, and talent development. What? That's like saying WWE, Vince goes completely insane, right? And right. he fires him. No, he can't fire himself. He fires. No, he might. Stephanie, he goes insane enough. Right. He fires Stephanie. He fires Triple H. He fires his basically like half his writing team and then brings in this guy. That's the equivalent of what, like. I'm like. What the fuck? That that's so um, ridic- like I I I understand having someone who is actually well I can't really say is relevant in pop culture because it's the Smashing Pumpkins. Smashing but pumpkins. you don't diss for Smashing Pumpkins. I'm not dissing them, but they not that relevant. And what do you mean? I've had albums in recent years. Yeah, and it was in the Transformers thing. But whatever. The point is that's is relevant. That, the point is. You got a guy from outside of wrestling, so who has a fresh uh, eyes, I guess, and has um, 
a different perspective on things. Because I'm guessing, and this is kind of the problem that Vince and Hunter and Stephanie will have, is they've been in wrestling for so fucking long that they're in their little fucking shit bubble. Which is kind of one of the Ooh. reasons why I wanted to start this show today with a UFC thing, rather than wrestling. Because there are other fucking things that do kind of involve wrestling, but not really. But, like, you've got this guy who's got a completely fresh idea and fresh takes on stuff. At this point, it's TNA. It What's can't the worst get that can any happen? worse than this. Yeah, exactly. So, What's the worst that can happen? He seems to have a good moral compass. His ideas may be a bit weird to put into wrestling, but at least they're good thoughts to have, you know? like. Uh, Change is good. Deal with it. Transgender racial storylines? That might not work in the realm of wrestling, but it's a... I mean... Remember the last time they tried to tackle on LGBT issues? Not even that with Orlando Jordan. <sighs> yeah, but that was, was Simply TNA. the greatest. Sim- that the was TNA that... in its purest shit form. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a th- yeah but that was typical wrestling. Haha, <laughs> gay person. We've got to have him squirt white shit all over him. Like, and it's no- changed. The landscape has changed since then, so... Yeah, Hopefully. and the thing is, any any other character that's been, like, a stereotype is because wrestling has been so entrenched in these shit stereotypes. Like, I, I don't want to keep going on about the New Day, but... Oh my god, they're not that racist. I like the New Day. Suck I like it. them now, because they're like... Oh, someone now had that the they're bright heels, idea, they are... Someone had the bright idea to be like, oh, they're not getting over and they suck. Let's make that part of the gimmick They're now. doing uh, the no, exact no, same really... thing, but now they're meant to be booed, no, no, so it's No, that's not even best. how it fucking happened, okay? I actually no, realized No, I'm saying this... Andy's point of view here. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm talking to Andy, but... <laughs> <laughs> this is what I realized. They're basically <laughs> the main roster equivalent of Bo Dallas yes. when he was in NXT. Because yes. that happened organically. For those who don't know, in NXT, Bo Dallas pushed as this delusional babyface. Everyone started to go like, no, fuck off. And he was like, D- D- Bo, yeah. No, but yeah. I'm great, though. I'm great. You like me. This is exactly. the same thing. Exactly. This is the same thing, except that's kind of the reason why Bo Dallas didn't really do anything on the main roster, is because no one really got it. Because he started as delusional. Yeah, he started as delusional. These but guys, they had... The, people they had eventually the came around to the idea. Yeah. But these I, New Day, they had the build before with like, oh, what the hell is happening with these? Why are they so happy? No, boo. For a couple of months. <sighs> Granted, it might have been a bit long, but it was just long enough to facilitate this change oh, into God. an entertaining group. Big E as like the... Oh, I don't know what kind of... But everything he says is gold. It's fucking amazing. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, we need, the we need to get that girl on. a prom date, by the way. Have you seen that? <laughs> no, what that. is that? I just saw a headline. What is that? Basically, okay. this girl on Twitter was like, because Biggie was doing like a uh, Totino sponsored Q and A because they have a great brand of products, and it's like <laughs> he basically was doing a Q and A, and this girl was like, "Prom or nah?" And he was like, "If you get thirty thousand retweets, I will attend your prom in a singlet." And <laughs> now they're making this into a thing where everyone is retweeting that tweet. I don't know how many like retweets it's got now, but. I kind of want to see this happen. I do too, and I want to see WWE film it, make a WWE 24 about it. <laughs> Biggie and he goes to prom. Last, like, ten minutes. No, Biggie he, goes he, to prom, just, dude. No, when the, when the band's playing, and like, they're just playing some shit song, he goes, no! And he just comes up, he just jumps up on the stage and just goes, Yes! <laughs> oh my god, that'd be amazing. Oh, that'd be and everyone fucking, starts booing him, gross. and he's like, Why? <laughs> yeah, like, and then, then, then the whole, the whole fucking like, prom people are like, no, they sucks. It's like, I can't even catch a break here, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but oh. point is, Smashing Pumpkins guy. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's. I mean, I'll give him benefit of the doubt until he does something. You know. Yeah, you cannot judge your character until the character has been seen. It, I'm just hoping that he can actually do something. It's he's not bred from TNA's shit, so maybe he'll be able to help it. And at the same time, he's not making grand promises of a major overhaul either. He's doing things that are within the realm of possibility. So we're gonna go to war with 
WWE? No, he's just like, we're just going to do some new stuff. Yeah, even if he doesn't fulfill, like, the whole specifics of what he's talking about, at least he'll still be bringing something new to the table, which is what's important. Even if it's bad, it can't be worse. TNA isn't actually, like, it's not at its worst right now. Oh, no, no, no. It's actually... But the ratings are terrible, but... Oh, yeah, because they fucking moved to a network which has barely any TVs attached to it. I mean... There's some of the most of the stuff they're doing right now is not too bad, but it's not great. But at least it doesn't feature Kane 500 times in a show. No, because that's the kiss of death. Fucking Khan, I'm so sick of him. You know who else people are sick of? Eric Ooh. Bischoff, because he's working with Jeff Jarrett and Global Force Wrestling. Although not many details have <laughs> been uh, revealed. What the fuck? I, I think Khan just Sorry. exploded at the thought of Eric yeah. Bischoff. <laughs> Well, I'd have thought of Eric Bischoff. Eric Bischoff? I'm allergic to Eric theme? Bischoff, I'm sorry. What, what was his theme in? Oh, yeah, and theme is TNA and WCW. It's like. I don't know, and your your theme anyway. replication is terrible, so I don't know. It's just well, a bunch just of NWO theme. <laughs> Anyway, moving on. So, uh, he he uh, is going to be likely involved in the production end of the TV show, even though GFW don't have a TV show, similar to what he did for TNA. Bishop has a certain amount of stroke uh, in the television is- industry because of his uh, Bishop Harvey Entertainment Company. But one has to wonder, though, where in the hell is the money coming from? TNA could afford Bischoff because of Panda Energy's backing, and if Jarrett is using his own money, it won't last long unless there's uh, immediate success. And both Jarrett and Bischoff revealed the news over, of, in all places, Preston City Wrestling over the weekend. Why the knock against Preston City? I don't know. You would have it's just a it weird been... little fed to announce this. Well, yeah. It's getting some publicity I know, nowadays, I like to I think. Know there, I know they're a part of GFW and everything, but like, okay. So, Bischoff is probably going to work on the TV side of it. They don't have a TV show. Yes, but they they're do. Doing, but they're uh, doing... Do they? It's just not been made yet. They've been but licensed where... to... They, they, you talked about some of the news, like, forever ago. They've been contracted to release, like, right. a certain amount of episodes, like, over a course of a year. So, whenever that's going to start happening, Bischoff will be involved in that. Did they? Okay. I just... I've, I've heard Researchers! So none. Well, no, I, I swear it was... No, I swear that there was no. a guy working with GFW who... his He was, like, a producer, but they didn't have any, like, television deal or anything? No, they do. They do now, anyway. Um, okay. I'm, as far as the financial thing, I'm sure... Working for Wrestle Kingdom got them a good con- chunk of change. Yeah. So and... that's holding them over for a while. But oh god, the more the more we talk about GFW, the more it sounds like it's just going to be TNA again. Why? No, because the core concept is so unique. Oh, People still... keep mistaking this for its own federation. That's it's not. not what it is. It's a group of federations. But getting globalized television. Yes. I don't know. The, That's the, good. The more, the more they have, like, Bischoff involved, and I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if Russo doesn't just fucking get involved in the shit. Why, how would he write for 17 different goddamn federations, Andy? I don't know. But They're I'm not just, writing well, I, for any of these places. I'm They're just, just televising them. I'm just worried... That when they do this TV show, it's gonna look exactly like fucking TNA did, and it's gonna be TNA. What, what do you one... mean it's gonna look exactly like TNA? What do you mean like, by that? Like Welcome to the like... Global Zone. No, I mean like ba- like back in like 2002 when it started, and it's just it's gonna just be shit. I, I... Was it shit? Went back when it started? No, back when it started, it was good. Exactly. No, when, when it was it was, like... was a little weird, but it was good. It was alternative, which is what this is. I, I want it to be an alternative, but I'm really scared that... It's not two, a singular federation. There's almost no way they can really screw it up. We will have to see. I like one thing I do want to see... You. The, the point... Not the point. The one thing I want to see from GFW to make it justified for existing as GFW... Because that does sound like a federation, to be fair... To justify that, I do want to see some sort of championship that is defended 
we've talked about this before, but a championship that is defended throughout all of these federations, like you have one champion that goes from place to place around the world. Just defending... like the NWA title used to be. Exactly. Okay. A new NWA. Even though the NWA exists, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Sort but barely. Of. Well, at this stage, it's way too early to tell anything anyway, so we just have to go off a of face value, and Eric Bischoff isn't exactly like the kiss of death towards any kind of company. He does have he's just some a, good impact, doesn't he? He's just a bad omen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's like the, the crow you see on the fence TNA... post before going into the village of cannibals. Yeah. It's like the stuff he did in TNA wasn't good. And like... His ideas with WCW inevitably killed the damn thing, so... I... Uh, Many things Not... killed WCW. We can't exactly do that on him. But one of the major things was like creative and creative control and production. like they saw how popular the NWO was, and it's like more, 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 yeah. more, 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 more. I kind of have to question how creative somebody is if you go to another company and you just do the same thing. Yeah, really. The thing is, we don't even know what he's doing. It says here, and not many details have been revealed, so this is just speculation at this point. Well, yeah, who yeah, knows I... what the fuck he's actually going to be doing, you know? Oh, God, he might just be a spokesperson. He might just be going around, yeah, really. around in places and going, GFW, lol, and, you know... That, His that name just it. makes people cringe a little bit, that's all. That's, that, that's the thing, because of the history and some of the stuff he's done. Which is why they probably decided to publish this story in the first place, to because get more attention to GFW. Yeah, we're now talking about a non-existent wrestling promotion. What the fuck? Essentially. Exactly. That's but, all that is. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to GFW just to see... Kind of <laughs> to officially see what it is. Because from Wrestle Kingdom, we really didn't get that great of an idea of what it actually is. So I want to see it in action, you know? I feel like Re- I feel like Lucha Underground has stole some of this company's... Momentum. Oh yeah, Lucha Underground is one of the best things in wrestling right now. Like that's so undisputed. Like, you need to you need to fucking hurry up with this, Jeff, because no, yeah, it's Lucha... been like over a year. We've we've been waiting a while here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know up. what his plan is, but Lucha Underground just kind of came in and was like, "Look at this shit," and everyone's like, "Yes, I love this Lucha shit." Lucha Underground's so good. It's so good. Like I watched one episode and I'm like, "This is so good." Yeah. It's different. The backstage segments are complete soap opera. Like, that's all it is. Like, it's not trying to play it down the middle like WWE does, and it's not completely reality like TNA tried to do. It's complete soap opera. Like, with lighting and different camera angles and, like, dramatic zoom-ins and shit. Like, it's the best. Watch Lucha Underground on the El Rey Network. Yeah, I mean, I genuinely love it. Okay, so, uh... Just sandbag my comment. <laughs> <laughs> because he can't segue, we know this. Uh, well, we've run out of news, so I can't segue. Oh, now we've run out of news, great. He tried to segue, but he couldn't do it. <laughs> you know what, Andy? You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Screw it, you're fired. No. No, 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 let me come back, I will... Nah, yeah, no, you're fired. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Pack, pack your shit and get out, it's fine. No. <laughs> we'll have someone else do the intro in the news next week, it's fine. Anyway. We, uh, hey, uh, here's a new announcement. We have an opening in the Supla for a new... Um, no, we new, don't! Yeah, we do. Host. Andy, shut up, you're no, fired. Get out of here. Don't. So, we are now hiring for a new uh, mascot slash news gatherer slash idiot. I'm, I'm a founder! Great. Uh, no, you're just get out. Founder. You are our Steve Jobs. Please I leave. am your Steve Jobs. And you're being fired, so... I could you... No, 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 no. What do you mean, no? No. You're fired. Yes. No. You're fucking no. fired. Get no. out. No. <laughs> yes. Is this the fault. perfect defense from being fired? Well, we're not Is gonna... this, like... It's fine. He's fired, so... <laughs> I'm not fired! He's, he's now fired. He's been Andy Kwan and he's now fired, so he's fired. No, I'm still a part of this show! I have been your host of the year, Sam Brooks. Liam can fire me! And I've been looking for new hosts, Carmine Antonelli. And we will oh, see you no, next I... week with some changes. <laughs> no! I'm still here! No!
No, you're fired. No, I'm not fired. Fired. Yeah! Fired! I'm not fired. Someone fired. email him a pink slip. <laughs> no, I'm not fired. We'll get Brendan on that. No, yeah. no, 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 no! Just tweet him a pink slip. I'm not fired! Yo, Brendan, tweet him a pink slip. Okay, thanks. I'll, I'll, I'll.